In this video, I'll talk about fingerprinting and hashing. A hash is a short value that uniquely represents original data. Hashing uses one-way functions that are not feasibly reversed without knowledge of the original data. Hashing is also an efficient way of detecting modification, especially across a network between multiple nodes, without having to transmit all of the original data. Instead, hashes can be computed on different devices, and the hashes themselves, which are much smaller potentially than the data they're based on, are what would be sent and compared over the network. Hashes are normally at least 128 bits long, and they're sometimes called message digests. We can compute a hash of data, and then compare that to an earlier hash of that data to detect if any changes have occurred. And this is actually done quite often with forensic evidence gathering to ensure that prior to forensic experts conducting analysis on seized information, we have a record of its original state. Ways that hashing get used include password hashing in the Unix and Linux slash etc slash shadow file. Here in Linux, I'm going to type cat slash etc slash shadow. In Unix and Linux environments, the shadow file will have user account information along with hashed passwords. Now, I'm going to clear the screen and bring up that command again with the up arrow, but I'm going to pipe it to grep, which is a line filter, and we're going to look for the root user account. What you're going to notice here is in the second placeholder here, because the delimiter is a colon, here we have a hashed version of the root password. Now, you can't enter in the hash to authenticate as that user. That's not going to work. However, there is an algorithm that's used upon logon where the password is fed through a hashing algorithm, and if it results with this unique hash, then the password is then correct. Hashing is also often used for file integrity verification. We can also verify that downloaded internet files haven't been corrupted during download by doing a hash after we've downloaded it on our local machine and comparing it to a hash published on a website. For instance, the SHA SUM command line tool can be used in Mac OS X to ensure that downloaded files haven't been corrupted or tampered with. You'll learn how to perform hashing in Linux and Windows in other demonstrations. Common hashing algorithms include MD5, that's Message Digest 5, RipeMD, and the secure hashing algorithm family, such as SHA-1, SHA-2, and SHA-3. In this video, we discussed fingerprinting and hashing. 